Welcome to Altium Designer Making the Connection as we continue our design capture by wiring up the place components. In this module, we will add wires, assign net labels, and add ports, creating the connections in the design. Wires provide a means of connection between components within a page, either by direct connections or based on matching net labels. One thing I must caution you about is the major difference between wires and graphic lines. Here's a graphic line, and here's a wire. I once saw an entire design with graphic lines used to connect components with net labels from a customer. He'd called in asking why his PCB didn't show any connections or net names. I had to break the news to him that the design needed wires added and the graphic lines removed. Needless to say, he and his boss were not very happy. Adding wires is straightforward. Click on the wire icon for the active toolbar, or right-click in the schematic and select Place, and then Wire from the pop-up menu. You see the mouse pointer change to crosshairs. Now click on the starting point of the wire, and then the endpoints or the intermediate points for the wires. While we have the wire active, we can hit the tab key to access the properties for it. We can change the current default color and width if desired. Notice the crosshairs indicating the vertices of the wire. You may have seen also that when I'm drawing a wire that moves both in the X and Y directions, that the preview shows where the tool will place the segments. If you want to change that, you can either manually place each endpoint or hit the spacebar to flip, bending the wire. Instead of entering each wire one at a time, let's draw one wire and copy it. Selecting the wire, we note that it's highlighted. Hit Ctrl-C to copy it. Now we can either use Ctrl-V to paste one copy of the wire at every pin on the connector like so, or we can use the Smart Paste feature found under the Edit drop-down menu. Note that the tool knows we have copied a wire. If we had copied more than just a wire, we would have left everything else unchecked except for the wire in that left column. Now comes the Smart Paste part. In the Choose Paste Action column, there are a number of choices. For now, we will select Paste as themselves. Click on the Enable Paste Array box so that we can create an array of wires with a set spacing. We will select a single column and 20 rows with a component's pin spacing of 100 mils. Hitting OK, now we can place the wire group. We could also move or copy these generated wires to add them to all the pins if we wanted. Now to add power and ground connections, Altium Designer provides power port symbols for both power and ground. Clicking on the active toolbar pull down for the ground icon with the left mouse button, we see a number of predefined power ports with symbols. These are global in scope, and by that I mean these nets are connected throughout the design automatically. Any signal name assigned to a power port is available throughout the design. Selecting ground, we can now place this power port by adding it onto the wires or pins as needed. Hitting the tab key opens up the properties window for the power port. We can assign another global name like AGND to the ground symbol as well, and change the style of the symbol if we wish. This would create a global power connection for the A, G, and D net. We will place two power ground ports for the connector, one on either side, and now two for the capacitors. Hit Escape or right-click to exit from the power port placement mode. Select the wires attached to pins 9, 25, and 39. Hold the Shift key down while selecting each of the wire. This allows us to select multiple elements, in this case the three wires. Now with them selected, we can extend them by clicking on their endpoints with the mouse. Holding the left mouse button, we can draw them out. Wires can be stretched or shrunk in this way. We will do the same for the right side ground connections as well. Let's place the 3V3 and 5V power ports starting with the predefined 5V, as well as using a power port icon. Hitting tab, we can change the net names. First, let's type 5V and then we'll also add a power port with 3v3 for the name. With the power ports placed, finish adjusting and adding wires to connect them. If you have a device pin needing to be connected to power, you may directly place the power port on the pin. One typical example of this practice is for the capacitors. Simply place the power and ground ports on the pins, and now they are connected. Now that we have power and ground connections, we can add the net names to the remaining wires. In Altium, this is done using net labels. Click on the net label icon, 
or alternatively, right click in the schematic and pick Place and then Net Label. With the Net Label active, we can use the Tab key so that we can change the name. Let's change it to GPIO2 in the Properties window. Now start placing net labels on the wires. It is important that they be on the wire or pin, otherwise they are not electrically connected to the wire or the component's pins. Now as we start to place net labels on the wires, you'll notice that there's a small cross at the end of the net label that indicates the active electric point. That is important to be on the wire or on the pin, otherwise you are not electrically connecting the wire or component's pin to that net label. As you place them, you will see that the net labels are incrementing. I really like this feature as it speeds up assigning sequential net labels. This works for any name that ends with a number. If needed, the net labels can be changed afterwards by double-clicking on the net label and editing its name in the Properties panel. As you can see, the Properties panel changes based on what is selected. Note some of the net labels created will not be used but can simply be deleted. GPIO 21, for example. One more useful feature involves using net labels to auto-generate wires. First, let's delete some wires to illustrate this feature. Now let's select some net labels and place them directly onto their respective J4 connector pins. Now with them still selected, hold the control key down and use the mouse to drag them away from the connector. This causes wires to be created. Simple, quick, and just one more way to get wires added to the schematics. Using a handy shortcut, E, S, L, for Edit, Select, and Line, we can select a group of objects using a line. Here we will select the just created wires from the net labels and adjust their length. As discussed earlier, net labels and wires only connect on their particular sheet. They are not global in scope. To make external connections, Ultim uses ports. We saw the concept of ports in the context of the power port connections. We could use the port icon. We can also use the right mouse button within the schematic to open up a menu window where we can select place and then ports to start placing ports. Either method works, whatever is convenient for you. Hitting tab, we can adjust the port name, its direction, and the fill properties. Note here we added the backslash to each of the letters to cause Altium to add the overbar for negation to the port name. We could have used only a single leading backslash if we had set up in the schematic preferences to allow for single backslash negation. Here let's looking at the preferences to show that option. Now let's continue placing ports. With a port attached and ready to be placed, hit the tab key so we can enter the proper name. Note. With the port name ending in a number, the auto increment feature kicks in with repeated placements. The first click places the port on the wire to connect it, and the second click defines the length of the port symbol. If you select the port, you can change its size by dragging on one of its vertices after it's been selected. We saw this used for the CS port as well earlier. Let's use another handy feature from SmartPaste to create ports from net labels. First, Let's add the spy bus net labels to the wires. We will now use the Smart Paste feature to automatically create ports from the net labels. First, we select the net labels and copy them. If the copy included more than the net labels, like wires, that's okay. We can just address that when we are editing in the Smart Paste. So hit Edit, Smart Paste, and once the window opens up, make sure that we don't have the Enable Array being set. Now let's unselect the wires, or anything else that isn't on that label for that matter, and then in the Choose Paste Action pane, select Ports. Hitting OK, now we have the new ports with their respective net label names. We can place the group of them and if needed adjust their location. We can and should select each one needing to be edited for its direction, using the Tab key to allow us to modify as needed the port properties in the property window. Now you can go ahead and place more ports, first hitting the tab to assign names and direction and then placing them. Just like with the net labels, once placed, the port definition can be edited by double-clicking on it and modifying the properties window entries. Here we have the processor interface with ports, net labels, and the wired connections completed. Save this as complete, and now let's open up the CAN interface schematics to continue wiring up the design. 
Looking at the CAN interface, we have already added some wires, net labels, and power ports. We want to underscore an important connectivity feature within Altium. If, within a single schematic sheet, two wires are labeled with the same net label, they will be connected on the PCB. One example of this connection using net labels is illustrated with the CAN underscore RXD connection between UC1 and UC2. UC1 pin 2 has the net label CAN underscore RXD on the wire attached to it. Looking at UC2 pin 4, it has a resistor connected to a wire with the same net label. These will be connected on the PCB. This is one way to eliminate a tangle of wires while providing proper connections on a single sheet. It is important to ensure that the net labels match exactly, otherwise they will be not connected. Altium has a few more handy methods for adding wires that we should learn. Opening up the digital I.O. schematics, we see it has no wiring yet. To automatically add a wire between components using the components, select one with the left mouse button, drag it over, using the mouse holding the left button down and place it on the pins of U1, aligning the pins so that they touch. Now holding the control key, click on the connector and drag it away. This generates wires between the two. Adding all the net labels to the new wires, let's ensure that they are all placed on the wire or they will not be assigned to the wire and be floating. To sum up, wires can be placed manually, they can be copy-pasted, auto-generated from connected components, and ports or net labels. Notice the 3.3 volt power port on the J1 IMU connector is rotated. This is done using the spacebar when moving or during placement, just like with components. I normally avoid rotating power ports as a personal preference, but we'll do it if it simplifies the look of the schematics like with this particular connector. Some companies have drawing standards that prohibit this. Either way, Altium is flexible. One more thing with wires. While actively routing a wire, you can change the routing mode by holding the shift key down and tapping on the spacebar. The wire mode is reflected in the bottom of the window, and you can try cycling through the various options. There's 90 degrees, 45, and any angle. Normally I use right angles. I would not recommend the any angle option as it may make the schematics look cluttered if used extensively, but again this is a personal preference. One other type of connection very common is the use of a bus. In Altium, we define a bus using square brackets with starting and ending indices separated by periods. Let's add a bus to the relay I.O. schematic for the two relay input signals. First, we'll add a port with the bus name relay, left square bracket 1 dot dot 2 and right square bracket. This is a 2-bit wide bus. Next, using the right mouse button, select bus and add that to the port and draw it down to connect up to the two wires labeled Relay 1 and 2. Now, and this is very important, add a net label to the bus that we just drew to define the width and the naming of the signals. Adding the same net label, Relay 1 dot dot 2, will allow it to properly connect up to the wires labeled Relay 1 and 2. This is critical. Port names are externally facing and do not connect up to the local schematic sheet's net labels, except when directly connected by a singular wire, or, in this case with a bus, a properly labeled net labeled bus. A generic bus has no names assigned to the bus, so the bus port would not connect up to the wires without the label. Just because the bus, when it was unlabeled, touched the wires, it does not mean that it's logically connected. It needs to have the net label. This is a common early error that we see quite often. Now, skipping forward to the schematics all wired up, including ports assigned, we can look at how all this ties together. This is a multi-sheet flat design without a top-level schematic showing the connections between the sheets. The connections are created or defined by the port names. Those that match are connected between schematic sheets. One obvious example is the power ports. To recap, the net labels are local to the sheet only, and the ports are used for making external connections relative to the local sheet. So it's the ports that connect together the various parts of the design on different sheets, relying on name matching to make those connections. It's as simple as that. This concludes the Altium Designer Making the Connections module. In this module, we added wires, net labels, power ports, and ports. In addition, we explored the use of copy-paste and smart copy as a design capture aid. 
Please do the exercise for Altium Designer making the connections.